I'm excited to bring you another great birth story episode. Welcome to the All About Pregnancy and Birth podcast. I'm Dr. Nicole Calloway Rankins, a board certified OBGYN who's been in practice for nearly 15 years. I've had the privilege of helping over 1,000 babies into this world, and I'm here to help you be calm, confident, and empowered to have a beautiful pregnancy and birth. Quick note, this podcast is for educational purposes only and is not a substitute for medical advice. Check out the full disclaimer at drnicolerankins.com forward slash disclaimer. Now let's get to it. Hello there. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. This is episode number 188. Thank you for spending some of your time with me today. In today's episode, we have Christy. Christy was born and raised in a small seaside town in Connecticut, where she also currently lives with her husband, her son, Leo, and their two dogs. In her professional life, Christy is a clinician at a pharmaceutical company where she oversees clinical trials for autoimmune disorder treatments. She is an exercise enthusiast, a cupcake fanatic, and she believes that movement and a quality baked Good can solve it all. Yes, 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 amen. All right. And in her free time, she can typically be found running, baking, or on a long podcast walk. In this birth story episode, you're going to hear about how Christy conceived her baby boy via IVF because of her mosaic Turner syndrome. You're going to hear what that is in the episode. And then we're going to hear all about her pregnancy experience, her labor and birth experience, which she called the best case scenario for her where she arrived at the hospital eight centimeters dilated and her baby was born four hours later. Now, even with all of that, she did have some challenges in the postpartum period and we are going to hear about all of that as well. As always, y'all know birth stories are my favorite episodes and this is another favorite episode as well. You are going to enjoy it as much as I did. Now, before we get into the episode, One of the important things about having a great birth experience is education. I have a fantastic childbirth education option called the birth preparation course, and it is on sale for the holidays. You can get it for $50 off. Just head to drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll. And the birth preparation course is my signature online childbirth education class that will get you calm, confident, and empowered to have a beautiful birth, the beautiful birth that you deserve through my five-step beautiful birth prep process where you set the tone for your birth, learn all of the details of labor and birth, get prepared for the possibilities, get off to a great start postpartum and learn how to make a birth plan the right way, you will be ready, ready, ready for your hospital birth. So check out all the details at drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll. And again, it is $50 off. All right, let's get into the conversation with Christy. Thank you so much, Christy, for agreeing to come onto the podcast again, because the (laughs) first time we had terrible audio issues. So um, I really wanted you all to hear this story, which is why I asked her to come back. So thank you so much for coming back again to record your story. Sure. Happy to be here. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and your family? I live in Connecticut, in southeastern Connecticut, pretty close to the shore, And I live with my husband, our two dogs, and our son, Leo, who is now 16 months old. Yeah, I I think the first time I recorded, we did not have a dog. Now now we have a dog. And now I'm like, uh, having a dog is a whole nother has a whole nother flavor oh, yes. into the mix. And, and you have two dogs. <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah. 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 And I bet it must be nice living close to the shore. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot of fun. We, yeah. um, we are a pretty active outdoorsy family, so it, it's great to be able to, to have that as an option. Yeah. 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 So, Of course, in order to understand the birth, we have to talk a bit about the pregnancy. And in your case, your pregnancy was conceived through IVF because you have mosaic Turner syndrome. So can you tell us a bit about what that means? Sure. So um, Turner syndrome is a condition where there is um, 
an abnormality in the sex chromosomes. Mm -hmm. So in an individual who is genetically XX, they would be genetically female and then XY genetically male. And so in Turner syndrome, uh, an individual can have either a complete Turner syndrome where it's all cells are X, essentially X nothing. There's Mm -hmm. one X only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a condition called mosaics Turner syndrome where it's not full blown Turner syndrome. And that's what I have. So roughly 15% of my cells are missing an X chromosome. And one of the conditions that goes along with that is infertility. Not always, um, but in my case, um, unfortunately, I am not able to conceive naturally. I don't cycle. Um, so IVF was really the best and potentially the only option, um, for our family. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's how you found out you were trying to get pregnant and then had difficulties getting pregnant. Yeah. And actually I, um, I was on birth control for a very long time Mm -hmm. and was getting a period with, birth control. Mm -hmm. And then when I went off birth control, it was a little over, I want to say it was almost a year that I just wasn't cycling and we were trying to get pregnant. And so then we, you know, we we had to figure out what was going on. (laughs) So, gotcha. Yeah. And how long did it take to figure out? Cause it's not a common thing. So sometimes, um, did you feel like you got a little bit of a run around before you, or did it take a while? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm a runner and the initial thinking was that it was something linked to, um, like uh, my hypothalamic pituitary axis Mm -hmm. and kind of, low body fat. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. there was, I went to, was it four or five doctors? Um, and, and, you know, dug into some family history and, Mm -hmm. and realized that, um, I needed some additional testing. Gotcha. 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 Well, I'm sorry it took so long to figure it out, but I'm glad eventually you did figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We were, um, we were really, I mean, as, shocking and kind of, you know, (laughs) it it was tough to kind of swallow the, Mm -hmm. you know, the diagnosis, but to be honest, it was almost a relief because it was a long time of, you know, just frustration, not understanding what was happening. So, yeah. 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 And then you knew you could like, there was something that could be done. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 And how was IVF for you? Was that a stressful process? It was, um, the hardest part for me was, was waiting in between stages. And we started the process in February of 2020. So our fertility clinic shut down for several months, Mm. um, starting in March of 2020. So we got, you know, we got the diagnosis and we were really excited to get started. And then we had to wait several months. Um, and so we were able to start the process in July of, of 2020. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't horrible, but, and once, um, that got started, you know, we had, we were very fortunate in that we had success at every step of the process. Yeah. And so we were able to get, um, two healthy, genetically normal embryos in our Mm -hmm. first cycle. And one of those embryos is our son, Leo. Okay. All right. That's awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. I know that's the, the, it's it's a very stressful process. Like pregnancy is such a like timing thing. And it's like, there's some, there's some points in it where you have no choice, but to wait, like there's nothing to do, but wait. Yeah. And it can be like, like nerve wracking. Yes. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So once you found out you were um, pregnant and things went well, what was your pregnancy and your prenatal care like? My pregnancy was very, um, I'm trying to think of a word to describe it. Okay. (laughs) Um, I didn't have much, uh, 
discomfort mm-hmm. or um, or illness. It, it was pretty smooth sailing. Um, at week twenty, I think it was. I had mm-hmm. my anatomy scan, and um, there was concern that I had a condition, I think it's vasa previa or vasa uh-huh. previa where yep. there are blood vessels running over the birth canal. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was a little bit of panic there for a couple of weeks. Um, right. But then I, I got a repeat ultrasound and um, everything looked okay. There was a marginal cord insertion though. So I had to be monitored closely um, just to ensure that our, our, that the baby was, was growing. Okay. Um, right. As one of the the concerns with that is, is low birth weight. Yeah. So yeah. I had ultrasounds every two weeks from, I want to say about 26 weeks on to monitor growth, just growth scans. And my prenatal care was, was excellent. I went to a practice that has both obstetricians and midwives and I rotated between the midwives and and OBs depending on you know who was in office that day gotcha which was which was great okay so you ended up seeing then a lot of different folks for your prenatal care and meeting all of the potential different people who you can meet that could be be there for the birth Right, right. And I did yeah. I did go to um maternal fetal medicine for the the growth scans to to okay. monitor weight and, and gotcha. length. Gotcha. So overall pretty low key pregnancy other than the things you mentioned and you felt felt satisfied with your prenatal care. Yes, yes, yeah, very okay. much so. Well good. So what did you do to prepare for your birth? I really tried to to stay active. Mm-hmm. Um so Movement has always been kind of my go-to when I'm not feeling so great or when I'm feeling off. And so that was kind of my my touchstone throughout my pregnancy. Um, so I continued running, walking, hiking, and I feel that that really kept me in a good mental space. Mm-hmm. And in terms of preparing for the actual birth, um, I read a lot. I listened to podcasts, listened to the birth stories, um, <laughs> talked to uh, a lot of my my friends who have children. And um, it, one thing I really tried to not do is plan too much. <laughs> uh, and I it was very against my my nature. I right. am type A personality Mm -hmm. and really initially wanted a step-by-step, you know, this is exactly what's going to happen. This is the Mm -hmm. pain medication I want. And then I just kind of surrendered and, and just accepted that whatever is going to happen is somewhat or or mostly out of my control and that I'll just have to to roll with it. <laughs> right, right. What do you think helped you get to that point where you felt like you could surrender to the process? I think just hearing other stories and, mm-hmm. and just trying to tap into my rational mind and, and just understand that there's absolutely no way that I am going to know what's going to happen. And mm-hmm. and that I I think a lot of it is too is that I was just so grateful and and felt so fortunate after what we had been through that I was right. kind of like, well, I, I just need to take it in stride and, and just just be so happy that I'm able to experience this. So gratitude, really, and yeah. looking for the, the good pieces and things. Yeah. yeah. Was there anything in particular that you wanted for your birth? I wanted to be relaxed and... I wanted it to be a memorable experience in a good way. However, you know, I know that in a lot of cases that's not possible, mm-hmm. but um, I, I didn't want to unnecessarily put restrictions on it in a way that would make it more stressful or, or more painful or 
I guess in some, I just, I wanted it to be a, a good experience. Gotcha. 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 So then what was your labor and birth like? Let's talk about that. Sure. So I had a growth scan scheduled at uh, 38 weeks and five days, I think it was. Uh-huh. And that the night before, I was was feeling off and thought I might be feeling contractions. And okay. I kind of just chalked it up to Braxton Hicks and, you know, first first babies never come early and right <laughs> so <laughs> i in typical fashion you know the next morning i woke up early tried to move through it i went for a run um i ended up meeting up with my sister-in-law and my nephew to uh-huh. to go get donuts and you uh-huh. know walk around right and right i was off work at this time i had maternity leave that started uh before my delivery date so okay um, oh that's rest- nice yeah yeah i had 3 weeks yeah. off before my anticipated uh, delivery date, which was That's awesome. Nice. Yeah. yeah. So around like 11 in the morning, I started to feel really off. And I was like, okay, something is is going on. I don't know okay. what it is. Right. So I called my doctor and they said, well, you know, start timing it and let us know. And my appointment was at 1.30, I think. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. closer to the appointment, I called again and I said, you know, I'm starting to get them like relatively regularly between like five minutes apart, six minutes apart. And they said, okay, like somewhat reluctantly, we'll, we'll call in a a midwife. And and so I called my husband, he was at work and I said, Uh we, we gotta go. I mean, so we get in the car and we start driving. I'm about 45 minutes from the hospital that I chose to deliver at. Okay. And that was a car ride. <laughs> Let me yeah. tell you. I mean, <laughs> I think we don't talk about that yeah, enough. The car ride to no. the hospital can be really intense. Yeah, yeah. It, things escalated very, very quickly. So, um, we we made it to the hospital. Uh, I it it's all kind of a blur from there, mm-hmm. but um, there was a line to check in. And I, I just said, looked at my husband, I said, I can't stand in that line. It, and it, <laughs> like, that's not going to happen. Like, yeah. do what you got to do, but we're not doing the line. Yeah. So they put me in a <laughs> wheelchair. It was very dramatic, you know, wheeled me across the lobby, got me right. into a triage room. And then things kind of slowed down a bit. Okay. And I don't want to say that I was being... um dismissed but I think you know I I was coming in as a first-time mom nine Uh days early and so Uh one midwife checked my dilation and kind of whispered to the other midwife and and looked a little surprised and then the other midwife checked and I was uh eight centimeters dilated wow wow (laughs) okay (laughs) so things had started kind of that night and then ramped up during the day yeah. and you were still kind of like yeah things are getting closer together and then it sounds like on the car ride things yes. really ramped up yeah. but it was only a few hours that things were pretty and yeah. not that long yeah no yeah. it was not long I was yeah yeah I was at home you know kind of moving around bouncing on the ball at like 12 30 I want to say and then we right. were in the car at like 1 1 30 and right. things just just went from there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what 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 went through your mind when you heard you were eight centimeters? <laughs> this makes sense. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I the way I felt and I I just thought I can't take much more of this. Uh-huh. I mean, it doesn't really get <laughs> worse or not worse. Right. It doesn't get more intense right. than this. Right. Because this, this, is, this is a lot is, right, right now. Right. Right. <laughs> So then what, what, what did you decide then? Like, what were your thoughts around? What did you wanted to do for what you wanted to do for pain management? I said, you know, give me whatever you can. (laughs) So, (laughs) um, I mean, I was not against any type of, uh, pain relief, um, that I was knowledgeable about. So I knew, you know, I, I was not against having an epidural, you know, whatever was, was needed for a, a calm, birth. So they ended up giving me, um, a spinal and epidural. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the spinal 
provided immediate relief. Uh And then the epidural um, after the fact was, you know, it took about like a half hour, I want to say to, to kick in, but, but from then on, it was just, it was so calm Uh and things still moved uh, relatively quickly, but um, it was the experience that I wanted for sure. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so you, from from the triage room to when they got you to the room, did things move pretty quickly? Were they like, oh my gosh, she's eight centimeters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I actually never made it to a delivery room. Oh. Um, I was moved <laughs> to another triage room. Um, the hospital was like overflowing. Okay. So, and things just moved so quickly that they didn't have a room available. Gotcha. So, okay. So you had (laughs) to stay in the triage room. Yeah. So luckily at one point they were able to bring in, um, a a bed, like a delivery bed. Right. Right. But yeah, I ended up, um, giving birth in the, in the triage room. Oh, those rooms are (laughs) tiny too. They're like little, I mean, for the most part, in most hospitals, they tend to be pretty little. They're not like the expansive sort of, yeah, sort of rooms. Were you disappointed? I mean, I guess you couldn't do anything about it. Okay. No, no. The only thing that I was a little bit disappointed about was, um, they didn't have a, a, they didn't have the equipment really that they needed in Mm -hmm. that, in that room. Mm -hmm. So they didn't have a scale, um, so we had to wait a little bit after he was born for um, for my husband to hold him. So I got to, of course, hold him immediately. Right. But they ended up having to kind of take him here and, like, try to find a scale. And so there was just a little bit of commotion after gotcha. um, because gotcha. they didn't have all the typical equipment yeah. in that room. Okay. 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 So what happened from when you got the epidural to pushing and Leo being born? Tell us about that. So as I said, things really started to, to slow down. Mm-hmm. I got moved into that other triage room and I was uh, hooked up to a couple of monitors just to monitor um, his heart rate and then also one to monitor contractions. Mm-hmm. So after I got the spinal and the epidural, I wasn't really able to feel the contractions. I felt pressure. Okay. Um, so the nurse was helping me kind of, she was kind of guiding when the contractions were coming based on the monitor. Um, so I reached 10 centimeters. I want to say it was in about an, an hour. Okay. Um, and then started pushing and oh, did I your pushed... water break at some point or did oh, they yes, break your water? Yes. Uh-huh. My water broke, um, in that first triage room, it was okay. probably like 10 to 15 minutes after I got in the triage room. Okay. Um, my water broke and, oh, also I was group B strep positive. Gotcha. So they had to figure out all the, you know, I had to get the IV mm-hmm. and so and I forgot to ask, did they, did, when they know, when they saw you were eight centimeters, did anybody all, talk about at all? Like, do you want to keep going without an epidural? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There was one midwife. Mm-hmm. She was so lovely and she kind of just looked me in the eye and she said, you are, you're in it. I right. mean, We're not going to try to, I mean, I I can't remember exactly what she said. Basically it was like, we're not trying to lead you one way or the other, but you're, you're in transition. Right. You could, you know, continue. Right. In in those words more or less. Sure. sure. And I said, no, (laughs) I said, nope. No, thank you. (laughs) And then it was just, okay. I mean, I didn't even sign, um, the anesthesiologist was, was also wonderful. And she, she just said, I'm going to verbally consent you, you know, we'll, we'll have you sign everything after. Okay. So I, I did a verbal consent for everything. Just, they were just gotcha. as fast as they could have. Gotcha. Been, gotcha. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. And had you thought, had you already decided beforehand that you knew you wanted to get an epidural or were you just going to play it by ear when you, yeah. Were through it? Mm-hmm. Um, I initially, I, I wanted to, 
try nitrous oxide because mm-hmm. I, I knew that there was more of an opportunity to move around mm-hmm. uh, with nitrous oxide. And I think if I had gotten to the hospital earlier, I might have gone that route because okay. I, it felt really good for me when I was was home, kind of just walking and, and bouncing on the ball and getting into different positions. But I think by the time I got to the hospital, I was so far along that it, I, I just didn't want to go that route. Gotcha, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Okay, so you got to completely dilate it, and then how did things go from there? So I pushed for, I think, around 45, 50 minutes, so oh, a, a little under an hour, yeah. Okay. Could you feel anything? Because it sounds like you had a dense epidural. Yeah, yeah. So once I started pushing, I actually started to have um, back pain, really bad back labor. So Leo, he was sunny side up. So he had to turn as he was coming out Mm -hmm. and, um, they wanted to try to do that naturally. They didn't want to have to, to try and and turn him. Uh So that part was, was pretty painful. Um, but I was able to, I pushed on my side a lot. Um, kind of rotating between my side, like one side and the other, Uh which was, was really helpful and and relieving some of that. And, um, one of the nurses was actually pushing on my back as well, which was helpful. Okay. Okay. So you felt like you had great support and encouragement while you were pushing. Yeah. Okay. That's impressive. Even in the triage room, I just, I'm just thinking about our own triage rooms. They're so like, they're like tight spaces. So for them to be able to do all of those things and, and help and support you sounds great. Yeah. 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 So then, um, you so said you pushed for about 45 minutes and you were with the midwives. Is that right? Uh, yes. So okay. there was one midwife and two nurses. Okay. Okay. And then the OB came in, um, kind of at the last, at the last moment. Okay. As I was, you know, as he was kind of right coming out. Why did the Why didn't the midwife just stay? So the well, the midwife stayed. Okay. But the the OB. So everyone stayed, and then gotcha. the OB came in at the last moment. Okay. 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 So then, what was it like, like pushing him out of your body? <laughs> <laughs> um. It was. Uh, you know, I can't really remember that exact moment, but I remember directly after. I uh-huh. mean, he cried immediately. Uh-huh. Everything was was perfect. Right. Um, right. It was, you know, best case scenario. He was right. really healthy. Right. He was small. Um, How much did he weigh? He weighed a little under six pounds. Okay. Oh, he was tiny. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So not, not really, really tiny. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was... Um, he didn't have to go into the NICU or sure, anything, sure, but, sure. but yeah. Um, so they, they immediately put him on my chest uh-huh. and, um, I mean, it was just a surreal moment. Mm-hmm. It was, it was just uh, incredible. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then did they do delayed core clamping? Also? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So I brought him straight on your chest, delayed core clamping. And, um, it sounds like it was just everything that you could have wanted. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, that was. is wonderful. That is wonderful. So then what was the postpartum period like for you? Um, it was tough for me. Okay. I think, you know, being a, a runner, I, I just have always had the mentality of kind of trying to, to get back to things really quickly, mm-hmm. you know, injuries. And so it was hard for me and that I had to really physically slow down Mm -hmm. and it was humbling in that sense Mm -hmm. um -hmm. oh i forgot to i'm sorry did you have any tears did you have to get any stitches or yes okay yes i did um i had a a very minor tear so i just yeah i needed stitches but it was um i think it was a first degree yeah that's the most minor yeah 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 okay it wasn't bad gotcha gotcha so you were thinking I mean, were you expecting that you were going to be able to get back to things quicker than you actually did or how you were feeling? I think so. Mm -hmm. Um, And even after, you know, my six week follow up appointment, when Mm -hmm. you're, you know, cleared to do everything, I tried to kind of jump back into it. And I was so not even 
not even close to being mm. ready. And so I had, you know, back issues and ended up going to physical therapy for, for core strengthening. And okay. so, um, in that sense, it was, it was difficult, um, for me, but, but I guess on the other side of things, it was also just in, you know, incredible, like really special time for right. our family. Yeah. So my husband yeah. was able to take a few weeks off. And so just having the three of us plus the dogs <laughs> at home and, <laughs> you know, just kind of, um, being able to, to bring Leo home and, and it just felt so right. Yeah. And so I, I you know, I remember it as a, a tough adjustment Mm -hmm. but also just a really really beautiful time as well Mm -hmm. and we have um I don't think I mentioned we have my husband and I are from the same hometown and both of our families are local so we have an incredible support system that's nice yeah that's nice so I'm sure you had lots of meals and things yeah help yeah 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 Yeah. we had and we had um lots of visitors which was just it, it was just so special to you know, have Leo meet everyone. And, right, right. And I had, right. um, I had a great maternity leave as well. I had five and a half months off. Oh, so. that is nice. <laughs> that is very yeah, nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very nice. And let me ask for, you said you went to physical therapy. Is that something that you took upon yourself to do or did your doctor recommend it? So my doctor ended up recommending, um, that I go to physical therapy Okay, due to, due to the back pain. Okay. Yeah. So, and it it was really just linked to, you know, kind of a weak core after pregnancy and delivery, which I would not have kind of put that together, but, Mm -hmm. but yeah, Mm -hmm. it ended up helping a lot. Okay. Good, 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 good. And did you breastfeed? I did. (sighs) Yes. And what was that like? So I, Actually, which is, this is very uh, contradictory to what I expected. I Mm -hmm. actually overproduced. Ah. Um, So (laughs) that was, that was pretty uh, surprisingly challenging um, Uh to try and, to try and regulate that Uh um, and kind of get the, the hang of that. But. So did you just have lots of extra milk? Yes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I I actually ended up donating a, a, quite a bit, which, which was, was great that I was able to do that. Um, right. Right. Yeah. And, uh, so I, I breastfed for about 11 months and okay. then had, um, you know, freezer staff and then I had donated some. So yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. nice. <laughs> yeah. People, you know, bre- breastfeeding is always like, you never know until you get into it. And some people are like, oh, how could it be bad to overproduce? But it's like yes. you're constantly, there's like <laughs> constantly milk. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And I had to start <laughs> pumping pretty much right when I got home from the hospital. And and I didn't know. I had no idea what was going on. So mm-hmm. he would he latched beautifully in the hospital. Mm-hmm. And then when mm-hmm. I got home, it was just, it was it was awful. He, oh. he couldn't latch and he was crying and I right. was crying and I didn't know right. what was going on. So I right. ended up calling the lactation consultant and she uh-huh. said, you know, you might just have to start pumping a little bit okay? because you're just too full. He can't latch. Gotcha. And yeah. Gotcha. So. <laughs> gotcha. gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I've always called breastfeeding a labor of love. Yes. It's not for sure. the easiest thing in the for world. Sure. Like your whole world revolves around your breast yes. <laughs> for a while. So. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. So how are you feel? How do you feel overall about your pregnancy, your birth, your postpartum experience? I'm really happy with how everything turned out mm-hmm. for me. I think um, I think it was really, and I keep, I keep saying best case scenario, but mm-hmm. it really, it really was. And I think I'm probably forgetting a lot of the <laughs> hard parts. I've kind of blocked it out, but, um, but yeah, I mean, my, my care prenatal and postnatal was, was wonderful. Our IVF clinic, our fertility clinic was, was wonderful. Um, so, so really happy about all of that. Yeah, that's amazing. And do you ever feel like sometimes I see that when people have um, 
challenges getting pregnant and then they're so excited and they have a baby. And then sometimes it, if the baby's like colicky or there are issues and they feel like, well, this is the, the expectations don't match up to what they were thinking. You know, they're thinking it's going to be this beautiful experience. Did you ever have any of that where you were like, this is harder than <laughs> I wanted this. I wanted this baby, but it's harder than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Um, it was definitely, I knew it was going to be hard, but I think it was a different kind of hard mm -hmm. than I expected. And I don't really know how to, how to describe that. Um, and I think to myself sometimes when things are really tough, mm -hmm. if I'm a, a little bit more accepting of it because we had such a hard time, mm -hmm. but, but then I think, well, am I just more accepting of it because I just love him so much? Right. I don't know. Yeah. It, it's yeah. just hard to say. Yeah. 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 I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, and then the last thing, as we wrap up, what is your one favorite piece of advice that you would give to someone who's getting ready to have their baby? I think my number one piece of advice would be, um, and I know you, you preach this as well <laughs> is to just advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, luckily I had a really great experience, but there, there were a couple of times where I had to, to speak up and, and really kind of, um, you know, reinforce what I, what I wanted. And if something didn't sit right, I, I, you know, addressed it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's easy to kind of just go with the flow a lot of the times. And, and you, you know, you want the experience that it is right for you. So, so yeah, definitely just advocate for yourself. 100%, 100%. All right. So where can women connect with you? You can say nowhere if you're not on social media or anything. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I think probably Instagram would be best. Okay. So my Instagram is K R Y S T I four three zero. Okay. So Christy right. four thirty. Perfect. Perfect. We will put that in the show notes. Well, thank you so much, Christy, for agreeing to come back on and record this again. Sure. It was just as delightful the second time. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Wasn't that a great birth story episode? And again, thank you, Christy, for agreeing to record it again since we had trouble the first time. All right. Now, you know, after every episode, when I have a guest on, I do something called Dr. Nicole's Notes, where I talk about my top takeaways from the conversation. I had a lot of options with this one, so I had to narrow it down. But here we go. Here are my Dr. Nicole's Notes from my conversation with Christy. I loved a few things that she said. One, you cannot plan birth, or rather she went into it with the attitude of not planning birth, which can be hard when you're a type A planner kind of person. However, I want to be clear that not planning is not the same thing as not preparing, okay? You can prepare for birth, but you can't plan birth. And preparing involves, you know, getting educated about the birth process. You really can't control birth. No one can control birth. I can't control birth. Doctors can't control birth. You can't control birth. Your baby has the most control over birth. And people will say that they can control things, but they're not. They're just doing things and hoping for a certain outcome, but no outcome is completely guaranteed. And I just loved how she said she had to surrender to the process and also using gratitude as well as a way to manage that, being grateful for the things that you had and taking control of the things that you can control. Again, one of the important things that'll be uh, crucial to do that is childbirth education. And I don't care what childbirth education class you take. Okay, that's a lie. I want you to take the birth preparation course. But more importantly, I want you to take any childbirth education. Like you need childbirth education. So find an option that works for you. Definitely check out the birth preparation course, drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll and get that $50 off for the holiday season. Okay, number two, labor is also unpredictable and it's different for everyone. Yes, we have some general guidelines about how labor progresses, but it can be different in any given individual. Christy was eight centimeters when she got to the hospital. Okay. I like to say like we as obstetricians and 
midwives. We don't know nothing about how labor can progress. And I don't mean that because actually we do know a lot. But what I mean is that it really boils down to the individual and what's happening in their own body. She really listened to herself. She knew something was going on. She actually had to advocate for herself a bit when she got to the hospital that, hey, I, I, I am feeling something. Things are ramping up here. And she was eight centimeters. So know that labor can be different for everyone. There there are general guidelines about how things may go, but don't be surprised if they go different than that. You have to know what the possibilities are and then be prepared that they may go different than that. Okay. They may go different than that. And then the third thing that I want to touch upon is after you have a baby and giving yourself some grace with recovery. You really become a new person after you give birth. You become a new person physically, mentally, things are going to be different. And you really need to give yourself some time to recover and then also adjust to the new normal of having this human being that you're taking care of, but also the new normal for you, the new normal for your body, the new normal for how you feel. So just give yourself some grace and patience with recovery. Don't feel like you have to hop back into anything right away. You know, I'm always like, F the snapback, there is no snapback. You get back to, or get to that new person of who you're going to be on your own time. And definitely seek out support if you need it. Uh, I think we definitely underutilize like pelvic physical therapist in the process of the postpartum recovery. So definitely check that out. If you think that may be helpful for you, it's probably helpful for most, to be honest. All right, so there you have it. Share this podcast with a friend. I so appreciate it. It helps me to reach and serve more pregnant folks. So if you love the podcast, then please share it with someone who you know who you think may benefit from it. Also, subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening to me right now and leave a review at Apple Podcast if you feel so inclined. I love to hear what you say about the show and it helps the show to grow. Do check out the birth preparation course, drnicolerankins.com forward slash enroll. Grab that $50 discount for the holidays. I would love to see you inside the course. So that's it for this episode. Do come on back next week. And remember that you deserve a beautiful pregnancy and birth.